Hello people, we have to look at rubella. <clears throat> rubella is basically also called as German measles, okay, and it is a communicable disease. How does it uh, go from person to person? Via respiratory droplets. It's a respiratory infection. It's a communicable disease, okay. It goes from person to person. Actually, this is a very mild um, infection and it is only uh, a short duration, approximately three days they are saying. And usually it just causes some low-grade fever, lymph adenopathy and maculopapular rash. But why is it so important? It is important, let us see, because it is teratogenic. It is the most perfect teratogen, they are saying. So, rubella is, uh, that is the problem with it. If the mother gets it, she can, um, the fetus can have congenital defects. That is why this is important. Just remember here, uh, measles is also called as rubiola and mumps is called as rubula. So, here what are we reading? We are reading about rubella, which is called as German measles. So, the, these terminologies may be very confusing. We are reading what currently? Rubella, it's also called as German measles. It's a teratogen. So, we are looking at this. So, in PSM, what will they ask you? They will ask you this epidemiological triad, right? They will ask you the agent, the host and the environment, right? So, what is the agent? Agent is this rubella virus. It is a virus which is coming under the arbovirus togaviridae family, okay? So, you have seen in uh, virology, in the classification, see, virus, it's an RNA virus under arbovirus, you have togaviridae, under that you have rubella virus. This has some positive sense RNA, okay? So, um, in this, uh, you saw that uh, it goes from person to person. So, the source is the case and the route of transmission is droplet. It's a res respiratory infection, right? Vertical transmission can be the mother to fetus. So, as these people will have rashes, right? The maculopapular rash, etc. These people, uh, the, there is no iceberg phenomena, okay? So, you remember that. No carriers, there are cases and there is no iceberg phenomena. Now, uh, period of communicability is one week before the rash and one week after. So, here you have the rubella virus. Let's look at this also. Remember, this is very similar uh, to measles. So, it produces uh, a xanthema similar to that of measles. But the problem here, it is teratogenic. So, if a mother, a pregnant woman gets it, then she will, uh, the fetus can have congenital anomalies. So, this is where the whole problem starts, right? Otherwise, it's a very mild disease. So, it can cause what? Congenital rubella syndrome. So, let's look at the agent that is uh, rubella virus. So, this is how you'll have to explain in PSM, right? Whenever you're explaining, which is the agent. Agent is rubella virus. It's a single-stranded RNA um, a virus, right? Single-stranded RNA is there, yes. And it has some uh, envelope, which has lipid, yes. And then it has spike-like glycoproteins, E1 and E2. It has only one serotype and humans are its only known reservoir. So, all this you should know. Then only you will know how the disease goes from one person to the other, how to control everything you will know only then, right? So, this is about the agent. So, some microbiology here. How do you diagnose uh, this? So, if a person has a rubella or not. IgM, first of all, which antibodies will come? IgM, then IgG, right? IgM will be detected uh, five, four to five days of onset, then IgG. IgG will peak one to two weeks after rash. So, now let us say you have, uh, you got rubella and now your IgG uh, is uh, there in your body. Now, a normal person will not have this IgG, right? So, now let us look at a lab report. Look at this. So, this is a rubella, uh, they are checking, antenatal checkup. So, they are checking for antibody, rubella antibody, German measles, IgG in the serum, in the blood uh, serum, they are looking for rubella antibody. And they found a lot of antibody, okay? So, what is the biological reference level? Normally, it will be, so normally there will be no antibody. So, this person has the disease, uh, may has got the disease and gone, the disease is gone or um, <clears throat> uh, they have taken vaccination. Okay. So, this is a good thing if it is more. But there is one more problem here that if this IgG is there, uh, this IgG can appear just two weeks after the rash. So, was it a recent infection? Did the person get it? Uh, you know, during the pregnancy itself, did they get that? This we need to know, right? So, they have some other check called as avidity IgG antibodies, high avidity IgG antibodies. They indicate whether the infection was recent, okay? Then they will be able to understand whether the uh, fetus can have congenital anomalies. So, now let's move on, guys. Uh, so, uh, if it is, uh, you know, anytime when it, the person is not pregnant, it is a very self-limiting condition like we told you. But if it is a congenital infection, um, if it is the mother gets it during pregnancy, especially during the first trimester or before uh, 20 weeks. First trimester or before 20 weeks, then it can be teratogenic, okay? 
so how, how will it affect the pregnant um, mother so usually they are asymptomatic or they have very mild febrile illness with maculopapular rash on face and trunk otherwise nothing happens to the mother but it can cause congenital rubella syndrome for the fetus right so remember all the uh, congenital inf uh, which the agents which cause congenital infection all of them are called as uh, under torch are in that is rubella okay so you can just focus on this in exam they will ask you assess probability of occurrence of congenital rubella syndrome okay so if the mother acquires the virus during the first trimester of pregnancy there is high risk risk is negligible after 20 weeks or 5 months of pregnancy what can happen the fetus uh, there can be miscarriage fetal death or premature birth with congenital defects that becomes congenital rubella syndrome okay so basically understand this if the uh, if it is during first trimester that the mother uh, gets this uh, disease then uh, that time what is happening organogenesis is happening so mother to tri uh, child transmission is 90% in this and it can lead to deafness in the fetus sensory neural deafness cataract cardiovascular defects like patent ductus arteriosus that is the triad if the mother gets it in the second trimester the mother to child um, the transmission is 50% that there can be this deafness sensory neural deafness and after 20 weeks the risk is very low mother to child transmission is 25% so all this we have already seen in congenital rubella syndrome um, uh, the uh, in that video but anyways let's just repeat permanent uh, problems triad sensory neural deafness in the ear ocular defects like salt and pepper retinopathy nuclear cataract you can see here then uh, glaucoma okay so optic nerve damage visual field defects with or without raised intraocular pressure right that is glaucoma cardiac defects uh, patent ductus arteriosus pulmonary artery stenosis ventricular septal defect all this we have looked at the details in our congenital rubella syndrome video anyways this is patent ductus arteriosus you can see it is open from the iota it seems to be going to the pulmonary artery so that is the triad but otherwise there can be cns defects like microcephaly so you can see here microcephaly mental retardation motor delay and autism okay so this is uh, this is very important you should know this so then uh, some transient congenital changes uh, hepatosplenomegaly bone lesion intrauterine growth retardation thrombocytopenia with petechiae that is blueberry muffin rash right um, remember if it is uh, this uh, blueberry muffin rash is along with thromb thrombocytopenia and iugia that is intrauterine growth retardation they are calling it as blueberry muffin syndrome so all this will be there then uh, there can be forschheimer spots okay on the uvula soft palate then uh, this is centrifugal the rash begins on begins on the face and the neck and it spreads centrifugally exanthemous illness sore throat headache lymphadenopathy you saw these newborn can infect other newborns remember this so are you understanding exactly what congenital <coughs> rubella syndrome is then look at this in radiology there is celery stalk appearance you can see vertical striations at the end of long bones are you able to see this kind of uh, pattern at the end of long bones can you see this kind of pattern in the long bones so that is celery stalk appearance in rubella okay so then coming to uh, prevention they will ask you prevention guys so now we looked at everything the agent the host the environment the clinical features congenital rubella syndrome everything now we will focus on the prevention okay so prevention basically you have the rubella vaccine which is a live attenuated uh, vaccine that a strain is ra27 uh, by 3 strain this is available separately uh, you know rubella vaccine it's a lyophilized uh, vaccine you have to reconstitute it with the distilled or sterile water remember just water uh, you need uh, to uh, reconstitute this vaccine and it's given subcutaneously you can see here subcutaneously this uh, vaccine should be given before pregnancy Uh, you know before a uh, few months before pregnancy uh, or any time you know if a person is 15 to 49 actually they give it to children right but remember before pregnancy if somebody is planning a pregnancy in few months or uh, if the person is taking infertility treatment etc then it uh, these people can be the first priority group non pregnant non lactating women you should not give it to pregnant and lactating women looks like so if the person is exposed to, to another person who has rubella they can receive passive immunization don't give this vaccine in pregnancy and don't give it just before pregnancy also so how do you give this vaccine subcutaneous yes okay let's move on 
So you can combine this with other vaccines like you have the MR vaccine under the national immunization schedule which is uh, given at 9 months and uh, 6 to 24 months just two doses there. Indian Ac Academy of Pediatrics they give MMR where you have 9 month, 15 month and 4 to 6 years three doses okay. So this is combination with other vaccines. So uh, you should not give this in uh, pregnancy remember okay that's it. So in this video we looked at rubella. So we looked at the microbiology, which virus it is, how it is caused, how do you diagnose it, ELISA, the test result, IgG, we saw all that. Then we saw even uh, radiology, that uh, celery stock appearance. Then we saw uh, some PSM as to how to prevent this disease, right? How to, what is the percentage of transmission from mother to child? We looked at that, mother to child transmission, we looked at. Then we looked at uh, the agent host environment, the triad we looked at. Then we also looked at vaccination and prevention. What else did we look at? So we have looked at almost everything regarding rubella. So we also looked at the pediatric and the gynecology part also. Pediatric, obstetrics and gynecology part also we have looked at. Everything we have looked at in this video. Okay, that's all for now guys. Bye bye. Uh, guys, just some small points here. So basically, uh, this rubella virus, what it does, it's uh, affecting cell division. That is why there is congenital anomaly and the intrauterine growth retardation. What is it doing? Cell division, it is stopping. So if you want to know why, because it is inhibiting cell division, you can remember. Another thing is in this, there is no coughing, okay, as a symptom. That's why there is not much communicability, remember this. Yes, in environment, right, in agent host environment, in environment you can see there is seasonal pattern, winter, spring, obviously it is droplet infection and there can be epidemic uh, every five years you can say. We told you it is a very mild infection, so the anyways, uh, the stages will be prodromal lymphadenopathy, rash and then there can be some complications like arthralgia complication, etc. Joints. Most common defect you remember is the sensory neural deafness, okay, deafness. And remember when they ask about prevention, you should say first priority will be women, right? Uh, Non-pregnant, non-lactating, 15 to 49, that is reproductive age women. But anyways, they are giving it to all children, right? That will be, that will not be first priority. First priority is the reproductive age women. Then anyways, you are uh, you're stopping the transmission that is called as interrupting transmission by vaccinating everybody from the age 1 to 14. You will use MR or MMR. Remember maternal antibodies can protect till 6 months. So anyways they are starting the vaccination only at 9 months. Okay. So this is something called as interrupt transmission of rubella. Okay. By giving to 1 to 14 year everybody. So you can give MR or MMR. Right.